Dzisiaj mamy przyjemność spotkać się z panem Walter Paszkowski, którego ojciec przypłynął do Kanady z Gdyni do Halifaxu w roku 1930. Walter urodził się już tutaj w Kanadzie. Rodzice osiedlili część zachodniej Kanady na preriach w okolicach Sexsmith lub Webster i wychowali a młodego Woltera, który został ministrem w rządzie prowincji Alberty, był ministrem infrastruktury, ministrem transportu i tak naprawdę pierwszym ministrem polskiego pochodzenia, a nie tylko w tej części kraju, ale, ale i w całej Kanadzie, a więc jako wszyscy rodacy Alberty i Kanady a jesteśmy bardzo dumni z kariery pana Woltera Parszowskiego, ale też jest on przykładem wielu imigrantów, którzy przybyli do Kanady w tak dawnym czasie a, i naprawdę zadomowili się tutaj w naszym kraju. Dziękuję, Walter. No, well, dziękuję bardzo. Bardzo. bardzo but, uh, I wish I'd practiced a little bit and uh, spoke a few words, but I understood every word you said. Did you understand everything? Well, today I'm really honored uh, to spend the time with uh, with uh, someone that I consider to be a friend because he really is a pioneer in our yeah, yeah. In, Well, you are a friend of mine. I know that. Polish, I certainly. In our yeah. Polish community. Yes. Uh, Walter's uh, mom and dad uh, came over here at a, after a, a war, uh, after the first war, uh, to um, to Canada, and ended up in Sexsmith. Uh, very humble beginnings, uh, homesteading in the Homestead. middle of nowhere, uh, Alberta, Sexsmith, yeah. and Walter became uh, the first uh, cabinet minister, and then actually. Uh, um, uh, uh, an idol of the Polish community with, with Polish heritage. Um, and Walter was the first one really to break the barriers uh, for, for yeah. later, myself yeah. and other uh, Polish uh, politicians over here. Um, it's, a, it's a great, great story of immigration from a Polish soldier uh, yeah. to a homesteader and a farmer in yeah. Alberta yeah. to a cabinet minister um, in Alberta. We don't see that very often anywhere uh, in the world. And here we yeah. are with Pan Władek Paszkowski. Right. Pleasure. Yes. It, uh, Thank you, Waldemar. Well, um, my dad actually uh, was a he, uh, received a script mm. from the military in uh, yes. in Poland, so that's where he did his did his early farming like type of thing, and uh, he arrived here in 1930. 30. He would have been uh, 31 years mm. old and uh, was in his prime. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you uh, see Webster, particularly north of here is where his land script was, mm -hmm. his homestead, original homestead mm -hmm. uh, that he applied for. Uh, and they did quite a bit of development, but you have to, you have to develop 10, 10 acres like, and those trees, the only way that they were knocking them down was with an ax and a grub hole. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would have taken forever to ever, uh, because you uh, ultimately would have had to have 30 acres that uh, would sure. have to have been developed like type of thing. So he was fortunate though, he had three uh, three sisters who were living here. Mm -hmm. uh, the first arrived in uh, Canada in 1904 in Winnipeg, the second one came to uh, Edmonton and then Grand Prairie uh, in about 1910 or so. And they, she was, and Frank Topher, who mm -hmm. was her husband, were the first white couple that were married yes, here. So it talks about the uh, the early beginning of this area. Yeah. They they were here right right at the beginning, like. And then the third sister, uh, they owned a blacksmith shop in uh, Sexsmith, mm -hmm. like type of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they moved into Sexsmith, they originally settled here because uh, Kate and Cherick had the store here, like mm -hmm. type of thing. But they uh, they moved to uh, Sexsmith, and the c cabin was empty, and mm -hmm. so that's where my folks spent the first couple mm -hmm. of winters. Like, but they bought a they bought a quarter of land through uh, some help from the, the sisters, uh, more, lent them the money, and uh, ultimately located outside of Sexsmith, which was already past the homesteading stage, sure. like type of thing, sure. and and they started to move move ahead with la with their land purchases, like so in a matter of, um, I guess, the first 10 years, they had one, two, three, four quarters of land that they mm -hmm. had uh, acquired, like type of thing, and uh, f farmed with horses, farmed with horses, at the, uh, and uh, so it was a, a typical homesteader's mm -hmm. beginning from a life in, in Poland. Good. 
so uh, Walter, uh, your parents came to Canada in what year? 30. 1930. Yes. And you were born in Canada already, 33, right? 33, yeah. 1933. Mm -hmm. And your father fought in the Polish army? Yeah, for three years. For three years? Yeah. And uh, what you showed me, Walter, earlier is that... I've got a picture of him uh, in the military and stuff like that. Unfortunately, he was in the cavalry, and he was a, a sergeant major, I guess, is what he was mm -hmm. in, in the cavalry, like type of thing, because uh, he had uh, four, four stri stri yes. stripes, rather, and uh, it's like our sergeant majors, anyhow, like type of thing. And and just to fast forward, do you know that that very regiment that your father was fighting with now is a sister regiment to the Patricias? From Edmonton. No. That's right. And the Polish wow. soldiers from that regiment keep on coming to Edmonton very often right now. Isn't they're, that wonderful? They're, they're twin. The I problem. Have to introduce you uh, to some of them. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. The problem that, he, that uh, came about, though, his company, there were 29 in the company. Mm -hmm. Only nine survived. Nine survived. Nine survived out of 29. But you have an interesting document you showed me because yeah. in uh, 1920, uh, your father was given land. Yes. Um, actually, uh, yes, it was given land. So this is uh, based on the Polish law of 1925. Your father was given a piece of land um, as, as a compensation, mm -hmm. I imagine, right, mm -hmm. for, uh, mm -hmm. for, for participating. Yeah, it's like uh, the land script that uh, the uh, Canada gave the soldiers. That's right. Yeah. And it's, and it's dated 1920... Seven, Seven. Yeah. 1927, mm -hmm. and it's a it's a parcel of land that is now in Ukraine. Yes, that's a very rare, yeah. very rare document. Yeah. So, where are your parents from? Where do they live in Poland? Uh, you're going to have to. My dad came from the Lublin area. Lublin. Yeah, originally. And then they. Uh, they became Canadian citizens. You showed yeah, me their yeah. citizenship uh, yeah, document. Yeah, there it is, yeah. over here, mm. on August 19, uh, in August 1938. 38, yeah. Uh, Władysław Paszkowski became yeah. a... Well, you had to know enough English and speak enough English and stuff, so they, they had some problems. So that's why they, they postponed that so long, like type of thing. So what do you know about their, about their journey? So uh, well, the well, war... Yeah, their journey was a... Uh, what, what was happening there is... is uh, there was trouble in the air. Mm -hmm. In that, uh, remember, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of hostility in that's that right. area, as there would be, because that's obviously right. somebody lost his land. Mm -hmm. In order to for him to get a script of like, of and there was hostility in the area, and there was imminent signs of war, mm -hmm. and so Dad had Mrs. Huncherick, who owned the store here in Webster. Mm -hmm. He had three sisters here, uh, Mrs. Stahlberg and Mrs. Topher. Mrs. Topher and Frank Topher were the first white couple married in this area. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, um, Isabel Campbell, who's the local historian, had identified that in her book, like type of thing, that they were the first white couple that were married here. They like, were married over here. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Henchera came here in 1904. So she, uh, she went to Winnipeg. And there are Piscowskis in Winnipeg yet, like type of thing. Okay. Tried making contact, but uh, all I ever get is someone who can't speak English and uh, doesn't want to talk, so sure. I've never... So how did your parents journey? Uh, on this on boat, ship, on a ship, that, uh, and from the where? name from, of the boat, from Dinya. From, from Dinya. Dinya. Yeah, and a very, very stormy. Uh, Jean was about the same age as, uh, as uh, Mrs. Uh, Selecki, mm -hmm. and uh, she can remember being sick all the time, like dad, mom, and the kids were all, uh, Mary and Jean were the two girls. So they were born in Poland? They were born in Poland, yeah. yeah. One was uh, five, I think, and the other was two when they came over. But they were, the trip was a bad one for all of them because there wasn't much fun to it. It was, and the boat was, there was no room to do a thing. It was so loaded like type of thing. You so. don't remember the name of the boat, do you? Oh, it's in here somewhere. I've Is got it? the name well, of it, yeah. Yeah, while, yeah. while you're telling me yeah. the story. So they would have they would have arrived in Halifax, yes. I imagine. They arrived in Halifax, 21. got on train, and uh, uh, ended up in Edmonton, and then took the train 
to um, to Webster. The Sexsmith actually is where they landed. But well, you know what you have over here is so rare. Uh, this is uh, Scandinavsko Amerikanska Linia. So those, this is actually what the tickets would have been. Would have been in, in, yeah, yeah. But here are the passports. Bureau mm. Scandinavsko Amerikanska Linie, Copenhaga, Canada, Winnipeg, Montreal. And those are their passports. Yes. So tell me, so they so they get off the boat in uh, Halifax. In Halifax. Yes. And, and what in the world makes them come? Sexsmith, not even Alberta. Alberta didn't that's, exist. Back that's then. where his three sisters were. His sisters were already here. Here, yeah, yeah, yeah. And how did they arrive over here earlier? Uh, the the uh, Mrs. Hancherik, who was the first one to come here, was in Winnipeg at 14 years old. And uh, so she uh, she came to work. Yes. And uh, obviously there, there are Pskowskis there, so I have a feeling that she came to relations is what it to, was. To, to reunite. Yeah, to reunite. And, uh, now, Lublin, then, Lublin was a, a fairly large European yeah. city at that yeah, time. Yeah. Sexsmith was in the middle of nowhere, so nowhere. we call it here Bush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, Mrs. Stahlberg, who was the... Uh, at Mrs. Topher. Frank Topher was here in 1906. Mm -hmm. Nobody was here in 1906 except for the odd, odd white person. So he was one of the original in, in this area. That's right. And so uh, he picked a farm. You couldn't actually have a farm until, uh, uh, until it was surveyed. Yes. But he, he picked some land for a farm, and ultimately the survey was done in 1909. Uh -huh. And so he got the land that he was operating so into the have, survey, and he started would, farming. Would he have bought it, or do you think it was granted? It was it was gifted it, by government. It was homestead. Those homesteads. Homesteads were um, were you had to develop ten acres. Yes. Uh, by the by, with three years, I think it is they gave you, and if you didn't develop it, they took it back. So he he had developed because it was most of prairie actually there where he settled near at Hermit Lake near Grand Prairie. Is where he settled. And well, then. I got it. You know, while you're talking, I'm listening yeah. to you, and mm -hmm. so it tells me that that's they, the boat there, isn't yeah, it? They yeah, they arrived in Halifax in the 19 would it be 1930. 30. Yeah. Uh, in the morning. Okay. Mm and they came here on Helig Olaf, which yeah. have been a, a German ship, steamship Helig Olaf, Poschkowski um, Maria. Oh, okay. And that's their immigrant identification card. That's how. That's the document they received in Halifax. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. To arrive. Mm -hmm. Now I've tried to locate that boat, and I was, uh, through the thing at Halifax. Yes. They don't have anything. This so Pier Twenty One has nothing on it. No. Yep. Well, if you show them this, because they stamped it, they actually stamped yeah. it on August Twenty Second, Nineteen Thirty. So then, you are born. Thirty-three. Nineteen thirty-three, mm -hmm. and and. Tell me what it was, uh, you obviously maintained your Polish culture, so parents spoke Polish to you? They did. Well, Polish. Uh, Jean went to school the first year she arrived here, to Webster. Yes. And uh, she had to learn English, because uh, she didn't know a word of English. And there wasn't anyone that spoke English like, and so uh, she, she learned and passed it on to the family, the mom and dad. And so the, Polish was the language at home? Yeah, Polish was the language to start with. Gradually, uh, by my time, yes. it, it was uh, a lot of English. And uh, I really never had to learn Polish, unfortunately. And that would have helped me because I made several trips to Poland sure. to uh, meet with the government there. And Because uh, one of the things I did was I got the Alberta office moved from Hungary to Warsaw. Yes. And uh, that way, that was the headquarters for Eastern Europe. That's right. It became, uh, it became Poland simply because Poland was more, more um, determined mm -hmm. and they really fought the communist system. So, uh, and so they were ready for change and uh, sure. moved more along. That's where it all started. Yeah, yeah. That's where it all started. But they were also, like the Ukraine, I was there that month after, mm -hmm. and they were really talking about making changes and all, and they still haven't completely made the changes there that are, you know, that Poland made. It takes them a little longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you become a famous guy in Alberta. Not a, not really. Probably not as famous as, as you, for well, heaven's well, sakes. No, not at that, all. But yeah. you, you become uh, the first Polish 
cabinet minister, right, of, uh, of, of Polish heritage. I was the first one actually born in Poland, but you were the first one probably of Polish heritage uh, that I can uh, think of. I, I, think, I don't know what Kowalski might have been there. Uh, was he there before you? Yeah. Was he? Yeah. So maybe he mm. then that would make you the second one, because I believe his I, heritage is Polish as well. I think it is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's, uh, he's a funny duffer, though. He, he, uh, he doesn't really, he wouldn't have a thing to do, like, when he's working with the Polish Society to try and get mm -hmm. that, uh, um, well, statue, I guess it is, uh, called, like, yes. up in that in the, in the grounds. That's right. Had he come to bat for it, because I, I couldn't get anyone to support me. That's right. And he worked against it. And well, Wallachian, we could have, he would have done it. Yes. He, he would have done it. Was but, the, uh, he was the Minister of Infrastructure. Yes. Yeah. Uh, right. uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he, uh, he, Kowalski had a lot of seniority on me, mm -hmm. and he was dead against getting into that at all. Had it not been for, for uh, uh, me, uh, there, he wouldn't have even, you know, Kowalski would have said no, nothing to do with that. But we managed to keep it going and trying to get it there, like, and Stan was fair. He said, sure. look, if, if we can get Kowalski to support it. To bring the it, Polish monument on the front on, on, on the It would have grounds. been there. It would have been there. So, but, and his church going and doing is not. But you, yeah. th during those years, when you were in government and cabinet ministry, mm -hmm. you, you were the face of the Polish community. Everybody well, knew that Walter Paszkowski is Polish, and, and yeah. you would show up to all the Polish Well, I was proud of it. I was proud of it. Yeah. I still proud, am. Very still proud am. Of still am. Polish. Because uh, I, uh, I, I, I'm just, well, pr proud of my heritage and proud of my uh, Polish background. And I think that they, we have a lot to be proud of there. I agree. And, and uh, so, in that sense, that's really why uh, why I was felt so so strongly that we should have that there. We got the community working for it. We got everyone that's willing to to do the work. Uh, why not? Well, so we picked up the torch after you. You we did. Looked, you and, really and it did. Looks like you it some, be done this year, actually. Some wonderful people. Uh, we, we, we may end up moving that monument this year over there. To the girls. That's what it looks like. That's what it looks good, like. Good, That's what it looks good. like. So let's 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 pray. Congratulations! <laughs> but we we may end up. So obviously you will be, you know, well, the first one to cut the ribbon. Well, if I can help at all. Uh, you started. You started it. Ah, uh, you're going to. Who, who who are you working with? Well, I'm working actually with the current government, and they're very. No, supportive. no, but who who. Uh, with the Premier's office and the Speaker's office, uh, okay. Speaker Weiner, okay, very supportive, and uh, and Brian Mason, the Minister of Infrastructure, okay. do it quick, supportive. Do it quick. Well, yeah, we yeah. have to do it uh, yeah. very quickly. But that would mm. be that would be the first uh, Polish monument on any legislature yeah, uh, ground, ever, would, anywhere. That's right. Yeah. which would be which yeah. would be phenomenal. Absolutely, absolutely, so and it's me. a nice one. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's a uh, very, very nice one. Very right? nice. Yeah, yeah. So tell me, how did being Polish influence your career and, and the way you, you, you carried on as a minister and, and, and your decision-making process? Uh, your culture, well, did it have impact? Oh, yeah. yeah it, very much so, because the Polish people uh, came together with me even before I was a minister. And uh, Berzniki and uh, with Tall the tall fella was president at the time. I'll, I, I can Look get up. his name. I can get his name. Yes. Yeah. So the because Polish Canadian Congress. Was, yeah. Po was yeah. Very yeah. That's right. No. No. They they came together. And Walewski was it? Yeah. No. Not Walewski. It, it was tall, tall fella. No. No. I, I've got the book, so we'll I can. Figure it uh, out. So, so Polish community was very helpful. Very well, they, they were very involved, and they were anxious to to get, get do some things. Yes. And heavens, that was I, I was proud of that. And so, uh, and really along the way, uh, uh, Klein, Klein and I got along pretty well, mm -hmm. very well. In fact. And so he, I, I'd go directly to him with everything, and uh, never once did he say no. Say no. Yeah. Yeah, and that helped. It helped a lot, and uh, and uh, because this community, the, the Polish community, was the only one. Like they brought the dancers in, first mm -hmm. time ever that that had happened in the legislature. Well, because they had their it, own Polish guy. They, 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 they well, no, it did. Um, Ralph had to okay that, like, of but uh, 
but I was proud to do it. Hell, why not? If why you got not? people that are anxious to do that, and they put on such a good show. Yeah. They did uh, so professional. Oh, they're great, and they're, uh, that's really the, uh, the uh, look at that girl. Everything she does, very professional. And, and, and they're proud of that. You know, you feel good about trying to work with someone like that. At, uh, yeah, at, I'm serious. It, so uh, it, uh, that's, that works. And it helps. And now you're the one that's uh, helping well, carry the load. Just, and, well, you, you, and you more did the, power you to did you. The pioneering. you. Well, you did the, not, you. not really. Not, uh, but it, uh, it's something that I think uh, there's a lot of poles in Alberta. And Lethbridge has got a pretty strong community sure. there. It, uh, still ongoing, too, mm -hmm. I understand. So that's nice. But yeah. when, when your father was leaving Poland and arriving in the middle of nowhere in a bush, in northern Alberta, he never imagined that his son would become a cabinet minister. Unfortunately, I lost my dad at a young age, like so. Uh, you know, I don't think he ever. Dad was involved in municipal politics over there, though. In Poland. Yeah. Well, tell me about it. What did I, he do? I don't know very much about it because he never talked very much about anything over there. But, uh, he, uh, the war, the war was a tough war, mm -hmm. and uh, he, the war, he never talked about. Other than the only thing that ever came out was. Uh, and came out one time when I kept started asking questions and all, and he says, "When you go through what I went through, uh, thank God there were cats around because we lived on that for uh, nine days." He said, Eat, "Eating cats." Cats, yeah, yeah. They lived off that, but he said only nine of us out of out of twenty nine came home alive. Out I, of that regiment. I, out of that, uh, I think it's a company, company. I believe it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So he uh, he had a scar. Uh, from that, there was no doubt about that. But so he wouldn't talk about it. So I couldn't find out. For I was interested, but uh, mm -hmm. but overall, it, uh, uh, Alberta's been good to us. Canada's been good to us, and uh, Poland was very like I I was there about three times on government business like type of thing, mm -hmm. and every time they opened up their opened up their doors and they were very very. It was very interesting. Because so, what was your impression of Poland? What years were you there? Uh, there was ninety-one, uh, ninety-seven. I went there with the federal government, and uh, and in two o two o one, wasn't it? We were there. Yeah. And what was your impression of Poland? Well, it changed so much from one to one time to the next time to the next time That's that right. it was just it was every time you got there, you were in a new country, mm -hmm. and. Uh, but they, uh, they were very, I liked what they were. They were good, solid Christian people and uh, that meant something to me. Mm -hmm. First time we were there, <laughs> we, uh, no, the second time we were there. Second time we were there, we were there on, on a mission to help uh, the coal mine. Okay. Because the coal was emitting so much dust mm -hmm. that all the land around it was, uh, was going sterile. Mm -hmm. And and so, environmental cleanup. Yes, and so it was environmental cleanup. But how can you make things grow and things like that? Which we uh, we had some good information for them on. But nevertheless, we we drove in there. It was late. It was getting dark, and we, we couldn't. We we didn't. There was nobody at the gate, so we drove right in. And once we got in, there was nowhere to go except one road. So we kept driving on the road. Keep driving. You know, it'll have to end somewhere here. But now we're halfway down that bloody hole that's a half mile deep, yes, yes, yes. That, that, that mine. And finally we got stopped by that guy. What are you doing here? Well, we're looking, we're supposed to have, we're, we were actually had a meeting set up, thank God. Mm -hmm. And thank God the guy was with me that had the papers, or we would have been in jail. Because <laughs> uh, they thought we were trespassing. And anyhow, he took us, oh, he said, we better go back to the head office here because you're trespassing here and that's out, that's against the law. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, he took us back to the, uh, to the office there, like type of thing, and did they ever give us the... And finally, uh, the guy that, uh, the government guy that was with me, the, mm -hmm. uh, he was from environment though, not from transportation. Yes. I was with transportation at that's the right. time. He, w he, uh, he said, well, I've got an invitation to come here. And uh, show me. <laughs> and by this time, they were doubting us. They were going to throw the book at us. But, uh, 
and everybody was trembling. The taxi driver, he was holding his head and holding his ears. I'm not, I'm not part of them. I'm not part of them. <laughs> it was humorous, really. But anyhow, uh, showed him the letter. Where's our letter? Because it was addressed to them. Yes. Nobody has it. How, 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 how could it be that I, we haven't got the letter? So they started making phone calls. And apparently the letter was that the department never got to them. Oh. And so, uh, so they turned around and let us go. But the whole thing was a bit of a fiasco because the ambassador who we met with before uh, didn't know where we were coming. And again, it was screwed up because the letter was there and everything else like, and, and she didn't believe us. And she said, you guys come around. Oh God, she was being, she had just changed embassy from India to uh, Poland. Okay. And, uh, but she was mean and said some things that weren't very nice. Like a, a little did she know she had a cabinet minister from Canada. Well, uh, she knew, but didn't believe it. Yeah. And she wasn't be believing like. Yeah. So the next day but those days, not a lot of uh, Canadian officials would have been coming to Canada. Not, to not yet, I mean, not yet, not yet, no. That just, no. just began that over was there. To that was, uh, Did you ever have a chance to go to your ancestral uh, parts of no. Poland? No, no. Uh, because the, the really were, where the onset, where my dad left from mm -hmm. was uh, that uh, Ukraine, Ukraine life. It became Ukraine. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's right. And uh, I, I couldn't communicate. Proper. And mm -hmm. so um, my mother really, uh, she was a sad victim of uh, her mother died at a very young age. Mm -hmm. uh, her father remarried. Her stepmother would have nothing to do with her. Mm -hmm. So she was... She was out working by 14 years old and got very little education mm -hmm. and all, and so, and Dad died at a young age. Dad was educated fairly well, like he was an officer with, yeah. with the Polish yeah. Army. Yeah. So at what mm -hmm. age did you lose your dad over here? Uh, uh, he was uh, 60, uh, 60. 60. So yeah. how old were you then? About? Uh, 29. 29. Yeah. Yeah. When he died, mm -hmm. but he became ill at, when I was 17. Graduated supposed to go to university next year and uh, so I went to ag school and uh, got college. Because you had to it, take it, over some responsibility. Uh, I had to take it over all of it. I had to take it all over. Mm -hmm. Dad could not work like type of thing and so uh, uh, but that was all right. You, uh, you learn in a hurry. And your and mom did she tell you stories about Poland and the journey and the beginnings over here? She that's all where I ever heard and that's all she from, talked about. Uh, no it's from her. Oh from Everything her. Everything was from her life yeah mm -hmm. but they uh, they uh, didn't, the boat trip was bad to the point they were sick in bed. Most, stormy. Yeah, stormy, all the way, all mm -hmm. the way. And so, because um, mm -hmm. they arrived, I'm just looking at the, they, they arrived here in uh, August, I think. In August. Yes, late August. That's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, did mom share with you any, any memories of Poland or? or yeah, they had, uh, they apparently uh, came from. A major Jewish, Jewish settlement like that. Well, Lublin had a very large a, a Jewish, Jewish yeah, community. yeah. Before World War II, yeah, of course. yeah, yes. yeah. And that's uh, she remembered the, uh, but she said we got along well with them. Of course. And there was no hostility at all. That uh, hostility came when they went to, uh, to uh, Lvov yes. area, mm -hmm. and that's where the hostility started to come, and that's why they, when the. Uh, the sisters said, "Get up, come over here, and we'll help you get settled." And uh, and they did, mm -hmm. because by November, uh, in these papers somewhere, uh, we've got a title that they're buying a quarter of land in Sexmouth. <laughs> really? So, yeah. And oh. I've got the first bank book here somewhere, oh, you which do? was interesting. They had twelve hundred dollars. Twelve hundred dollars. Twelve hundred dollars in the first bank book, like that. Yeah. So tell me, how did your your mother's siblings get over here? Uh, all by boat. They came here much earlier. Though. Earlier, one came in uh, one came in '04, I think. Uh, Marie. In 1904. Yeah, to Winnipeg. Uh, Marie came here in uh, I think it was nine. No, ten. 10. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mrs. Dahlberg came, I'm not positive, but I think it was about 14 when she okay. came over. Like, huh? So who lived in Winnipeg? I don't know. I, I because, because someone in your family was 
There had to be someone in the family that because my first aunt went to. This is a, a, a bill to pay for a Polish magazine called... Oh, Chas, Chas, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's that would have, the, the folks would have had that. Okay, so your parents were buying the magazine yeah. from Winnipeg. It's a, it it's be, a newspaper, it and Chas was there when I, uh, when I joined the Canola Council, when I became chairman of the Canola Council. Yes. Uh, in Winnipeg, there was this little old building with the sign in the window, yes. Chas. Chas. Yeah, it was still sign. there into the 80s. Oh, really? Yeah. So yeah. that would have been familiar to you because you saw it at home. Uh, I saw a, it there kid. every day, every week, rather. So it was who a was weekly. reading? Mom was reading Polish Dad. magazines? Dad. Dad. Dad was reading Polish Dad would magazines. read to her. And, uh, that is... That is. So any other memories your mom was passing on to you? Uh, well, they, uh, they, they used to uh, have a big fruit farm. In Poland. In, Pol in Poland, and I think that acreage is almost all fruit. And Dad was, uh, he would, he would uh, take a branch and, uh, and put it into the trees. Yes. And so he did that for everybody in the area, like type of thing. That was, uh, I don't, he, he didn't get paid to do it. Like he was just, he was the guy that did that in that area type of thing. They bartered, I think, at that time a lot. Oh, sure. And so, uh, what is that? And here's your mom receiving uh, birthday wishes from a member uh, of Parliament. Okay. Oh, Cooper, Albert Cooper. From Albert Cooper, mm -hmm. and uh, she turned 83 years old, and she got yeah. birthday wishes from, yeah. from yeah. Ottawa. Yeah. October 1st, 1984. Yeah, okay, okay. What is this one? Let me see. Uh, it's a confirmation with uh, that. Uh, uh, this is just uh, this is a certificate that uh, he is released, basically giving him a, a holiday uh, as a reservist. Oh, uh, okay. days off. Okay. And that's signed in uh, Krakow. Krakow. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay, I got a and, picture. And, a pro, and it looks like it was medical. He was he had a medical release. Uh, he was born in 1899. Yeah, and they yeah. gave him a medical release, but just a temporary medical release because it is signed by doctor. Uh, oh, is uh, it? Yeah. Okay. Here's the title to the first land that he bought in 1930. Sexman. Yeah. Brown. Brown was the uh, postmaster. His at one time in Sexman. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This is another yeah. citizenship, yes. Yeah, national this one married is woman. Chess one. Yeah. See, she was married to whose husband was naturalized, and so she automatically became, yes. as did the kids. That's right. And, uh, Well, I'm a little disappointed because that's all I have pretty well. You know, from, Walter, I have to tell you, you have more than I have uh, ever seen anybody uh, have. And, uh, I could only imagine how your parents must have felt when they received this. Those were the tickets. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Um, I think somewhere there may be a piece of a ticket in there. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. This is. But you're the first time anyone has ever described what there was in here. Well, let's sit down later and go over the piece by piece. Yeah. And, can, and this is his ID. Uh, his military ID. That was his oh, military okay. ID. Okay. Okay. Well, this is wonderful for me because I'm finally getting it transcribed to. Your father was and very accomplished in the Polish army, obviously. Yeah, yeah. He was in the cavalry. Mm hmm. And to the very last, like he worked basically with horses until yes. till I came along and got the tractor. And uh, horses were always looked after first. And uh, here he borrowed. Uh, he took. He borrowed money. It's a, it's a short-term uh, uh, withdrawal, but it's, it's borrowing money. Well, they be in Poland. In Poland. Uh huh. And he borrowed 100 MK. I'm not sure what MK stands for. Marks. Because uh, marks it, it, would have been marks. Marks would have been the currency. Yeah. So yeah. He borrowed 100 marks, marks, perhaps to buy the tickets. Yeah. You know, very, that could very well possible. be. Could well be. 
and I would expect application for canning sugar. <laughs> yeah, that's for the. I've got the uh, books with the uh, stamps. That's to get oh, stamps. To get, to get stamps. Yeah, I'm gonna have to put it with the books though, because now that I know what it is, I'll put it here. Mm -hmm. But uh, these are these are archival museum pieces. But uh, they, they, not the, much of this exists anymore. The, you know that. The twelve hundred dollars that he put in the bank would have been a, a thing from Tovers, borrowed money. Yes, is, is what it would have been. So the ship would have been Swedish, probably, because it's a Scandinavian. Olav, American yeah, Olav. Right. Would, Olav would have yeah, been yeah, Swedish, yeah, not German. Yeah, and from or or was well, from Copenhagen actually. Yeah, yeah that's uh, right. Might have been uh, Danish. And it would go either to New York, Chicago, or to Canada, and then they to Montreal, oh, no. and they obviously had an office in Winnipeg. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And here are their uh, travel agencies in Poland where you could have bought For those heaven's sakes. Um, Lublin. And there is Lvov. Lublin. Oh, there's Lwów. Yeah, Lwów, yeah. Równe, Tarnopol, Kraków, uh, uh, Kowel. I well, they're all kind Gdansk. of in a kind of in a in an area, aren't they? That's, well, actually scattered because Gdansk scattered, is but up north, in uh, is, yes, uh, southeast. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, Krakow is good. Uh, very, very interesting. Very interesting. We actually, uh, Marlis and I actually uh, had supper at the president's house. In Poland? In Poland, yeah, with the president. Like a, Which uh, president was it? I don't remember his name. Wałęsa Kwaśniewski. Not, not Lowenza. In 90, uh, 90, 97. 1997. 97. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. did that feel? Yeah. It was interesting. Oh no, he, the bugger down damn near. Uh, oh lord. It, uh, he, he had a shot glass. Also, oh, it was Kwasniewski for sure. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> here, bottoms up. Yes. The damn stuff was 100% overproof. And thank God I was smart enough to not bottoms up because yeah, I let him go first and he <laughs> bottomed up. But I just took a little bit and I damn near didn't make it. That stuff was so powerful, I couldn't get my breath. <laughs> and uh, oh God. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he had just built a new house, oh, and sorry. and he took Marlos and, and me to his new house. The landscaping wasn't done yet, but it was a beautiful home, yeah. you know, way out in the country, all by itself. Outside of Warsaw. Yeah, somewhere. outside of Warsaw, and uh, yeah. So, Walter, at what age did you lose your mom? When did she pass on? How old were you? Then? She was uh, she was eighty nine. I was in government at the time, ninety one. So your mom saw you sworn in. And oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Tell me about that. Well, she. Uh, <laughs> She was worried. She was a worrier. Always worried, like type of thing. And she was worried I was going to be in trouble. And uh, and uh, uh, she was worried that I was going to embarrass myself. And she was worried because, frankly, m my whole where I had problems was I was supporting Paulette Patterson mm -hmm. until 7:30 of the morning of that of the announcements could be made. And we knew Mel Knight was running and Mel Knight was going to announce at noon. So the, the secret was to announce before. Yes. So she, uh, everything was fine when I went to bed. I was supporting her. 7.30 in the morning, she phones and she says, I pulled out and uh, you're going to have to take this on. Well, I'm sitting at the breakfast table and <laughs> what do I do? And the wife looks at me, because uh, I was, that was my first wife. No, that was my first wife. She died of cancer. When yes. I, she uh, says, you're just scared you're going to get beat. Oh. What would you do? Those are fighting words. Like, I'm in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's the only reason I went in. I've got a farm, for God's sakes. That's right. And a fairly, you know, me, me, mid-sized one. Yes. What the hell are you going to do with that? Never gave it a thought. So I, I said, well, there are 15 people. That I, that I knew that had called me and lobbied and really right to the very end were very strong. And uh, and I said, if every one of them shows up, we're going to have a coffee. If they all come out and show that they're sincere and they're, mm -hmm. I'll go for it. But if one doesn't show, I'm no. not going. 
loaded. I thought that was an out. That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> Fifteen showed up. All showed up. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> we're in it. So away we go. We're into the election night. It's in Flair is where we were, we were celebrating. Yes. And I'm praying to God that I lose. I'm praying to God because I started to think, what am I going to do tomorrow with the farm and everything sure. else? Like, And this is in spring. Yes. Yeah, how, what? Dwayne had allergies, has, has a bit, had, yes. had them really bad. He wasn't going to farm. And he, the kid was doing very well in the oil patch. He, mm -hmm. was, uh, he was a second man, uh, assistant manager of the bloody uh, operation in Grand Prairie there. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, uh, by, and he was only 21 at the time, all, and he was already worked his way up to there. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we talked with him and said, well, you're going to have to come back. Okay, he said, well, I'll give it a try. I got these allergies, but uh, uh, we'll try and work around it. And he did. Did a hell of a job, and uh, he hadn't driven any equipment. He hadn't done anything like. Took over the farm. The first year, but it was when Getty got beat. Yes. And so we didn't get going, and for so I seated and showed him quite a bit of what to do there. At harvest time, we weren't sitting, so I met, and it was an early August harvest, so we, I was around, showed him all the things, and from there on, he was, he was gone. So that's he bailed us, bailed me out. At, uh, and and you ended up becoming the minister of agriculture, agriculture yeah, first, which yeah. was quite an honor, really, because uh, in Alberta, yeah, in particular, in a farmer like, and uh, ultimately, you always dream about sure things like that. It, uh, but they don't happen, so it did. Uh, and then transportation, I really liked that one, yes, because I got to be the guy that twinned the roads here mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, did the sod turning for Anthony Handy. That's right. And uh, actually, there were two, uh, built a road in southern Alberta, like 33 part of that. Yet, uh, so it was, it was nice that, uh, yeah. What a story. Well, it's, uh, well, you lived it. You lived well, it, so yeah, you know. Współpracujemy na całą Albertę, jak również na całą Kanadę i jest dla nas zaszczyt spotkać Pana dzisiaj tutaj w tym miejscu historycznym. Wiąże to się wszystko ze stuleciem niepodległości Polski też. Pan urodzony tu w Kanadzie pracował tak długo w naszym rządzie, nigdy nie zapominając o swojej polskości, religii. Yeah, yeah. Dla nas to jest zaszczyt, jak yeah. również mamy tutaj wśród nas naszego młodego mm -hmm. pol polityka, uh -huh. który urodził się w Polsce i będąc 12 lat młodym chłopcem, dzieckiem, oh, okay. też doszedł do tak wysokiego stanowiska tutaj w Kanadzie, jak również nigdy nie wstydził się i nie wstydzi swojego pochodzenia, swojej wiary i zawsze jest otwartym sercem, z pomocą dla nas wszystkich, kto tylko o to poprosi. Także bardzo serdecznie dziękujemy Panu. Well, bardzo, bardzo. Dziękuję. Dziękuję. Yeah.